Okay, guys. So, here's what you will need to do this. This is a garden sprayer. Now, uh, in other DIY ways of doing, you know, weeding your clutch and brake hoses, you'll see people buying these big, high-end, expensive garden sprayers. You know, that cost like twenty or thirty dollars, which is honestly a waste, a waste of money. You also see people attaching pressure gauges, you know, to these sprayers. Again, a waste of time and money. Any of these sprayers can generate 10 PSI, which you'll be able to feel by the resistance. And honestly, it's more than enough uh, to, to bleed your clutch or brake lines. Even less than 10 PSI will, will do the job just fine. So what you will do is you will go and buy the cheapest garden sprayer you can find. Don't buy the one with, that has a nozzle you know, attached to it by a hose. Buy one like this. It's simple and it works. This one costs like five dollars. You will need also some plastic hose, some hose clamps, you will need a bottle that is half filled with clutch or brake fluid, you will need of course some clutch and brake fluid, and you will need uh, a spare uh, a spare master clutch master cylinder cap. Uh, now uh, my car is a Toyota and most Toyotas use this you know, very simple rubber cap. Uh, some other cars use a cap that has a thread on. I mean, the simplest way to, to solve this is not to buy any sort of adapter or complicate anything. Just go to the junkyard and buy a spare cap. I paid a dollar for this one. So it's very easy. You will drill it and we'll put some holes in it to connect it to the pressure, uh, to the, sorry, to the garden sprayer and make this work. So as you can see, uh, this cost me less than ten dollars, and and there's no need to spend a fortune or complicate things to be able to to bleed your clutch and brakes yourself. So now I'm going to show you uh, how to connect all of this and how to make it work. The first step is get your garden sprayer and get a piece of hose uh, that is just the right size for the nozzle of the sprayer. As you can see, this is what I bought. It fits right on. To be sure, it's extra, extra secure and there's definitely no air coming through. I'm going to get a hose clamp. And I'm going to fasten this with a hose clamp. There we go, that's done. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to get some, you know, sealant. And we're going to seal this little pressure relief. Now, don't panic, everything's going to explode as long as we are sensible with pumping this and don't pump it too much, we are definitely going to be safe. The next thing we are going to do is we are going to get a drill bit that is just slightly smaller than the opening of our hose. center of our spare master uh, cylinder cap. Now, when you're doing this, be careful uh, and make sure that the, that the cap is secured tightly because, you know, it's rubber and it might... Yeah, yeah you get Now fill your garden sprayer with your clutch liquid. Clutch and brake liquid is nasty, so don't forget, always wear gloves. Okay. You can now remove your Master cylinder cap, put it aside. We are now going to attach this 
one. There you go. Just to be extra sure it doesn't pop off, we're going to secure it with a big cable tie. Just like that. Okay, okay there we have the garden sprayer, the hose, and the connection to the master set. Here's what we have done on the slave cylinder side. As you can see, up above is the clutch line. Below we have a hose connected to the bleed nipple. And we have a spanner, a right side spanner attached. And we have submerged. We have submerged the hose inside of the bottle that is filled with clutch fluid. Now we're going to pump up, uh, pressure up the system, and as soon as the system has been pressurized, we're going to unscrew the bleed nipple. Okay, we are now going to pump. After you have pumped up your garden sprayer, five or six pumps are all you need. We're going to unscrew, you're going to unbolt this bleed nipple, you're going to move the spanner. You do not need to unbolt the full turn, just maybe three quarters of a turn are going to be enough. And you're going to see liquid come out of the hose and go down and go down into the canister. Into the canister where you have your clutch. Now, uh, you will notice if there is air in the system, you will actually notice some air in the hose. And as soon as the liquid uh, uh, fills up the entirety of the hose, as soon as you cannot see any more air gaps or air bubbles in the hose, you are going to, to, uh, to bolt down the bleed nipple back. So I can really show you this because it's impossible to hold the camera and, and do all this, but I think you get the idea. After. After you pull down the nipple, you're going to test your clutch. Okay, so if you have done this right, you're going to be able to uh, see the slave cylinder uh, in its full range of motion. You're going to be able to engage and disengage the clutch completely, and also uh, the clutch should not be feeling spongy anymore, and gear shifting should be completely smooth and easy. Okay, I'm going to go press the clutch so you can see full range of motion of the slave cylinder. And there you go. I think that's pretty much the easiest and cheapest one-man method for bleeding your clutch and brake lines. So, if you like it, thanks for watching. If you don't like it, give me a comment, let me know what I did wrong, what you think could be done better. And if you want to see more of this, of course, subscribe. So, thanks for watching. Bye.